World What Really Happened in Vegas Former CIA operative Lt. Col. Tony Schaffer recently went on Martha McCallum on Fox News and said that the Vegas attack was a deliberate terrorism. Lt. Col. Tony Schaffer, I think it's shaping up to be a very deliberate act of terror. This is beyond dispute. The question becomes motive. Everybody seems to be searching for a motive. I would argue most of the clues of motive is right in front of us. It was a politically selected target. This is the perception based on information. The perception was going to be a lot of pro-gun folks there, Trump supporters at this concert. So therefore, I believe the perception was, by the shooter, by Paddock, this was a legitimate target of political expression. Martha this may be something people don't like to understand but the very reason that Hodgkinson did what he did, and I believe Paddock did what he did, because the left has not encouraged the use of violence as an extension and use of political speech. This could be the reason that nobody seems to want to announce what the shooter's motives were. Share this everywhere if you want to know why he did it. This needs to come out now. OMG! The Las Vegas Sheriff just let loose and released massive secret about Shooter. This is huge. The Las Vegas Sheriff gave a press conference at 5 p.m. Pacific Time today. The Las Vegas Shooter was living a secret life according to Sheriff Lombardo. Watch the insane video below. Sheriff Lombardo, investigators have spent the last 72 hours combing through the life of 64-year-old Stephen Paddock. To produce a profile of someone I would call disturbed and dangerous. Stephen Paddock was a man who spent decades acquiring weapons and ammo and living a secret life much of which will never be fully understood. He meticulously planned on the worst domestic attack in United States history. ISIS just claimed responsibility for the attack, twice, earlier. Who do you think was behind the attack? Get this video out there. There was something going on in Las Vegas that needs to get out. Share this with every conservative you know. Jim Acosta asked Sarah Sanders if CNN is under investigation, what she said next broke him. Jim Acosta went after Sarah Sanders again and referenced the president's tweet to investigate fake news. Sarah Sanders wasn't having it today. White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders warned the media that they had a responsibility not to report fake news. CNN's Jim Acosta said this, does he value the First Amendment as much as he values the Second Amendment? Absolutely, Sanders hit back. The president is an incredible advocate of the First Amendment, but with the First Amendment, with those freedoms also come responsibilities. And you have a responsibility, to tell the truth, to be accurate. I think, right now, when we've seen recent information that says that only 5% of media coverage has been positive about this president's administration, while at the same time, you have the stock market and economic confidence at an all-time high. ISIS is on the run, unemployment is at the lowest level it's been in 17 years, we've cut regulations at a historic pace, we're fixing the VA for our vets, she complained. You've only found 5% of your time to focus on some of those issues. And frankly, those are the issues that most Americans care about, not a lot of the things that you cover. Not a lot of the petty palace intrigue you spend your time on. I think we need to move towards a more fair, more accurate and, frankly, more responsible news media for the American people," the press secretary said. Let's send CNN a message on behalf of we the people. Do the following two steps. Comment I support my president. Share this if you don't support CNN. Michelle Obama just said something unforgivable about white Republican men. Michelle Obama is not graceful. 
she is not kind and intelligent. She is a rude and disrespectful race baiter. Last night she had the nerve to try and say something racist and untrue about the Republicans. While talking about being at inaugurations, Obama claimed that one side was full of color and diversity while the other side was just gray and white. She said with a smug little smile on her face. On one side of the room, it's literally gray and white. Literally, that's the color palette on one side of the room. On the other side of the room, there are yellows and blues and whites and greens. Physically, there's a difference in color, in the tone. Because one side, all men, all white. On the other side, some women, some people of color. According to Michelle, the white people are the reason that people don't trust politics. How is blaming a race or gender not discrimination? It's time we end these crazy double standards that the left has set up. Republicans are not racist and white people are not evil. Race is not how we should judge others and we need to force the Democrats to realize that by sharing this out. After entering hospital, Trump walked to this Vegas victim and witnessed miracle. President Trump showed up to Las Vegas on Wednesday after the deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history. This was literally a day after his visit to Puerto Rico to see the devastation after Hurricane Maria. You won't see the following video of him in Las Vegas on CNN. The president went with University Medical Center's Trauma Center to go visit some of the responders. The moment you are about to watch is tear-jerking. The caption below the video was the following, I will never lie down when the president of this great country comes to shake my hand. There may be plenty of issues in this country but I will always respect my country, my president and my flag. Shot in the leg or not, I will stand to show my president the respect he deserves. The video was posted by Thomas Gunderson. We cannot be defined by the evil that threatens us, Mr. Trump said after seeing Nevada Governor Brian Sandoval. We're defined by our love, our caring and our courage. Mr. Trump said that when the worst of humanity strikes that the best of humanity responds. We can see that in this video. Spread this video everywhere we need to make show the whole nation how wonderful our president was today. The media isn't sharing it. God bless this country. Screw the Vegas shooter. The American spirit shall overcome the horror we witnessed from Sunday. Thanks, patriots. The president just stood up and gave the Las Vegas shooting victims a gift only a president can give. Today President Trump has been busy in Las Vegas visiting the victims of the terrible shooting as well as the first responders. During his time there he visited a local hospital to meet some of the victims of the attack. After meeting the victims, the president gave an impromptu press conference where he announced that he was so moved by the people he met and their courage that he was inviting them to the White House. Trump told reporters, I just met some of the most amazing people. We met patients that were absolutely terribly wounded. I invited a lot of them over to the White House. He continued, I said, if you are ever in Washington, come on over to the Oval Office. And they're all saying, we want to do it. How do we do it? And believe me, I'll be there for them. A chance to visit the White House as a guest of honor has been used for entertainers and diplomats alike, so this really is a once-in-a-lifetime gift that only a president can give. However, Trump cannot be expected to help these people out on his own. He needs the help of the entire country. Our prayers and donations help more than you can ever realize, so send him to Las Vegas and let's heal the city. Don't support them these three companies are donating millions to take down Trump. The resistance movement against Donald Trump may not have been very effective in the 2016 race, but they're certainly persistent. Now we know why. 
they're being funded by billionaires and multinational megacorporations. Large companies often try to hide such donations behind super PACs and bundlers. But thanks to a report by the Washington Free Beacon, we now know names. The Center for Community Change Action, which is at the center of this reveal, is a proactive anti-Trump organization that seats its members on liberal activist boards and promotes direct action against Donald Trump. 1. Kellogg the most notable donor to the Center for Community Change Action is the W.K. Kellogg Foundation. The left-wing affiliate of the mega serial brand gave a massive $3 million to the organization. 2. Ford Motor Company Image Source, Ford The Ford Foundation, which was formed by the founders of Ford Motor Company, donated a further $2,350,000. Kellogg and Ford aren't the only mega donors to the Center for Community Change Action. The California Endowment donated $524,500, the National Immigration Law Center donated $316,000, the Marguerite Casey Foundation donated $515,000, and Fidelity Charitable Gift donated $505,100. 3. Of course, George Soros Open Society Foundation gave $1,750,000. If you support Donald Trump, don't support these companies, your dollars are directly funding organizations that are trying to destroy our president. Will you boycott these companies? Say yes or no in the comments and share. People need to know what their dollars are being used for. Get this out there. Trump just met victims of shooting, then drops bombshell MSNBC doesn't want people to see. If you didn't see it, NBC released a scandalous report that said that they had sources tell them that Secretary of State Rex Tirson called Trump a moron and that he had thought about leaving. Right after leaving the UMC hospital to see the victims, Trump then turned to the media and talked about the amazing job those first responders have done. Then at minute 3.15 he turns to the camera and slammed MSNBC for their reporting. Trump hit MSNBC for being fake news again. President Trump, I'm very honored by his comments. It was fake news. It was a total phony story. Thank you very much. That was a big F you to the media. Here is what Tyson said earlier today that made Trump loved so much. The media has been running this story all day to distract from the fact that Trump is there in Vegas days after the awful tragedy. God bless the president. He works awful hard and the media works hard writing awful stuff about him. MSNBC should be ashamed for that story. Here is what Rex Tyson said about Trump earlier. Share this if you support our president and love that he is there in Vegas supporting our police and other first responders. Let's show the media how many Trump supporters are out here. Hotel worker just leaked the receipts of Vegas gunmen that will change everything. Las Vegas is still mourning the worst mass shooting in U.S. history that happened on Sunday night. As time goes on, more and more facts have leaked out about the shooter. Now one of the biggest has just leaked out of the hotel where shooter Stephen Paddock was staying. Late on Tuesday night, a hotel worker from the Mandalay Bay posted a picture of the receipt he claims was from Paddock. Even more interesting, it says there were two guests in the room. To make it even more complex, the worker claims that he actually personally served the gunman. Not only that, but the receipt is dated September 27. This would prove that Paddock was checked into the room at least one day earlier than police claimed and may substantiate a source who claimed he was there since September 25. The person who posted the pictures has since deleted them, but that did not stop them from getting all over the internet. His profile does still claim he works at the Mandalay Bay, though. 
There can be no doubt that this is a massive break and the FBI needs to investigate this immediately to check for authenticity. Help get this share out everywhere so they take it seriously. The moment Trump landed in Vegas, every reporter noticed the brand new thing about him. Donald Trump arrived in Vegas today and everyone noticed the amazing new thing on him. You got to see this. The press is busy writing stupid stuff like this. Trump is the man. He's going to Vegas to feel the pain of the city. Watch what happened the moment that he got off the plane. Do you see the color of his tie? We're going to pay our respects, to see the police who've done really a fantastic job in a short time, Trump said before leaving Washington. It's a very, very sad day for me personally. Trump is going to Vegas to channel the nation's grief. That's why he wore a purple tie. Purple is a combination of blue and red, and it shows unity between the two parties. Trump is a hero. He is going to Las Vegas to honor the victims with his presence and focus wanted media attention on them. God bless our president. Help Trump by sharing this everywhere and commenting God bless him below.